sinkhole in an Asheville neighborhood is growing. News 13's Kristen Aguirre spoke to a man living next door about why he's so frustrated with the response to the problem that keeps getting worse. This sinkhole behind me has nearly doubled in size and neighbors now saying it's impacting their daily lives. This has been a constant source of stress for two and a half months. That stress, this sinkhole. Then we had those two huge rainstorms in August and uh, that really opened it up much more. And blocking storm culverts, forcing the water into nearby homes like Nat Dickinson's, who lives next door to the sinkhole. And the water just came rushing down the driveway. Our backyard was flooded and the basement was flooded as well. Dickinson now fearful what could happen next as the sinkhole has reached his property line. No, homeowner's insurance covers neither the sinkhole for these folks or if it damages our property or even if our house is condemned nor does it cover surface water runoff. Dickinson saying he contacted the city back in July, but has received little help. Been really disappointing. It's been very disappointing that no one will call me back until yesterday. I mean, we are 77 days in. Yesterday was the first time I had a conversation on the phone with somebody. I've got no recourse. I don't even know these people at all. News 13 is working to get in touch with that property owner, but so far we have not been able to reach them. Now Dickinson calling in on the city for help. Whatever happens, if you have disengaged owners that, that aren't actively managing properties, at some point the city needs to step in. Now the sinkhole at his property line. It's at the fence line right now. Yeah, yeah. So it's at the property line and once it affects my property, you know. Drawing a line in the sand. Your only recourse, sue them to their liability insurance. Now the city told us today that this homeowner is working with a private company to get the sinkhole filled. But when will that happen? We still don't know. Tonight, the Asheville City Association of Educators is responding to bold recommendations to help with Asheville City Schools financial issues. News 13's Andrew James has more on teachers concerns with the recommendations. The recommendations presented to the school board last week included possible consolidation of schools and programs, reviews of department budgets and outside service contracts. But the recommendation some employees are most concerned with is a possible hiring freeze. We really need to be sure that we're not balancing the budget on the back of our students. Asheville City Association of Educators President Daniel Withrow responded to a financial analysis of Asheville City Schools. The report calling for immediate action because spending and staffing levels are unsustainable. So I'm not really surprised these recommendations came about. I'm a little disappointed that they did not consider the opposite end of things. Withrow saying he knows there are financial issues, but he worries a hiring freeze would only make things worse. I know that right now um, our schools are not fully staffed and uh, the staff that are working are working so hard to make sure that our students needs are met every day. Withrow tells me some employees are leaving ACS because of workload and pay levels under a hiring freeze. Those positions wouldn't be refilled. We have staff who are currently living below the poverty level. We have staff who are burning through their savings. We have people leaving in a letter to staff and families. The school system says no action has been taken Taken, and the Board of Education will review the recommendations and take public input before any decisions are made, adding that outside service contracts are under review as well as department budgets to help cut non-essential spending. We are all in this together. This is not a, you know, adversarial thing at all. We're all in this together and we know there's a problem here to solve. We also know that the school system is waiting for a final state budget from the General Assembly and we do know that the Board of Education has a meeting scheduled for Monday night where we could learn more about these financial recommendations. A Western North Carolina business celebrating its 50th anniversary held a special celebration today, but the spotlight wasn't on the business itself. News 13's Hannah McKenzie explains. Buck Stove manufactures and sells stoves, gas log sets, and lanterns. The owner here tells me they've always been military minded, so the theme of this year's anniversary was a given. And I'm looking forward to that Buck Stove in Spruce Pine. Celebrating five decades in business, but owner Robert Bailey says the day isn't about him. We just want to do something decent for the people. It's a salute to veterans and a tribute to the 13 U.S. service members killed earlier this year in Afghanistan. Every time I see the loss like that, it just brings it home like a dagger in your heart. 
Vietnam War veteran Rick Hunter was a fighter pilot, serving 27 years in the Air Force. Having been a combat fighter pilot uh, and lost friends, I know how far that reaches. Uh, just You think it's just 13, but you can multiply that by hundreds. And it uh, means a lot to have this kind of a, a display. Nestled in the display, 13 Freedom Lanterns, one for each life lost. Buckstove manufactures them, a passion project of Bailey's, says his daughter, Claudia Honeycutt. He wants to get a lantern in the hands of veterans all the way across the country. He's gifted several hundred over the years, she says, one of them to Hunter. The effect that this lantern has on veterans, so many of us that came back from Vietnam never, never got a thank you, much less endured a lot of other abuse. So to have somebody just offer a, a lantern like that as a thank you means the world. Buck Stove owner Robert Bailey is a veteran himself, so was his father. He tells me some of the proceeds from Saturday's raffle will go to organizations benefiting veterans.